Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome to Fortune Street. This is going to be the first actual board playthrough of this project. Uh, I'm going to be covering the boards in tour mode. Now, a lot of you guys are probably thinking that free play mode would be the better option, but I kind of want to do tour mode just because I want to give you guys kind of an idea of how tour mode would work for you. Because essentially, if you want to unlock everything, uh, you're going to have to do it in tour mode. So that's basically uh, what's going on here. Uh, we have three tours. We have the Dragon Quest Tour, Super Mario Tour, and a combination of the two. Uh, the Dragon Quest Tour has uh, six maps. We have Castle Trodane, the Observatory, Ghost Ship, Slymenia, Mount Magmageddon, and the Robin Hood Ruins. Now, for the first board, we're naturally going to cover Castle Trodane. Uh, right here, we see uh, basically what the board looks like in that little window in the bottom left. Uh, we also see who our competitors are. We have Slime, Platypunk, and Princesa. Uh, Slime is D rank, uh, Platypunk and Princesa are C rank. Uh, victory positions, uh, you have to get third or higher if you want to clear this mode. And the target amount is 6,000 gold. So. Uh, essentially for the victory position, since that's like the only thing I need to explain, I'll get into the computer uh, difficulty levels later. But if you want to actually unlock things in uh, the tour mode, you actually have to get the victory position. So in this case, if we get fourth place, we do not clear this map and we'll have to play it over. Uh, the difficulty conditions do get harder as you go through, as you can see. Uh, when you get to these last four boards, you have to actually get first or second, not third. While on these two, you actually have the safety of third. But, um, yeah, that's essentially what you have to do if you want to clear tour mode. You have to get basically a crown, or in another words, complete the victory positions on every single board. So, now that we've gone over that, let's go ahead and get started. The first board we're going to be covering, like I said, is Castle Trodane. Yes, we're going to play on this board. And yes, we're going to have a good time doing so. <clears throat> and excuse me, I had to cough right there. So the first thing we have to do is determine our turn order using a random number generator. On this board, we will be going second after Platypunk, followed by Slime, and then Princessa. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started here. The first board of Fortune Street. Should be a lot of fun, right? Oh, we'll find out. Okay, so as you can see, the board is shaped like the number 8. Very small board, doesn't really take a long time to finish this. Plus the target amount is very small too, so... Yeah, this board will not take us a very long time at all. Uh, one thing I want to cover very quickly, and I like, I like how the characters actually, uh, converse with each other. Uh, view board. Not much we have to really go over except this space right here. This is an arcade square. Uh, whenever you land on an arcade square, you get an opportunity to play a casino minigame. Uh, there are four different minigames, and, uh, basically you do one at a time. And then once you go through all of them, you go through this, the same order over and over again until the game ends, basically. Uh, the arcade square is really fun. Definitely try to land on it if you can. Even if you don't win, just given the chance to win is always a good reason to go there. So, yeah, that's basically my uh, opinion on the arcade square. Uh, so first we have a four. We can either land on the suit squares, or we can go up here and get the 210 shop, which I... I'm definitely liking that idea, so I'm going to go there first. <clears throat> now it's Slime's turn. And he's going to go for that 290 up there. Naturally, whenever you're dealing with computer AI, they're going to try to go for basically the space of least cost. At least when they're trying to avoid your spaces. If they're trying to buy spaces, they're going to go for greatest cost. So if they have a choice between a 160 or 155, naturally they're going to go for the 160. And since we're kind of talking about computer AI really quickly, uh, 
I think that it might be a good time as ever to talk about the computer difficulty ratings. As you guys saw on the main screen, uh, Slime has a rank of D, and Princesa and Platypunk have a rank of C. Uh, basically what this means is it's kind of hard to really put into words. Because this game is so luck-based as it is, you can't really say that one rank is better than another because no matter what, you're always going to be surprised by the end result. You never know what's going to happen until the game is obviously over. But generally, the players that have a higher rank will generally perform better. So in this case, uh, Princessa and Platypunk will have a greater chance of winning than Slime will, although... That doesn't necessarily rule Slime out at all. In fact, you know, it's just as equally good as he's going to win as the other two, but generally the other two perform better. And one thing that I think is kind of unique for this game is that each computer player actually has its own unique AI. So, like, uh, Platypunk will actually do different things than what uh, Princessa will do, even though they are technically at the same level. So, uh, you know, there's definitely lots of room for uh, differences in this playthrough. You're never going to have one playthrough that's the same, I, I guarantee you. But yeah, right now, things are not really going so well for me. I've uh, kind of settled in last place, and I only have one property right now. Although the same could be said for Princessa, too. Here's the hoping it stays that way. No, she actually gets to play an arcade game. Okay, then. First game we have is Round the Blocks. Round the Blocks is a uh, tic-tac-toe type of game. If you line up three pictures in a row, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, you get the reward that you see on the right-hand part of the screen. So Princessa got two slimes, two rows of slimes, so she basically gets that reward twice. And that reward was get 50 gold times your level. She's at level 1 because she hasn't had any promotions yet. So she's going to get 100 gold. It seems kind of unfair, but that's the way it works. Although I guess unfair is not really the way to put it. But anyway, let's just keep going. Unfortunately, that's not really going to help me. I mean, it will, depending on my reward for this. But, um... Oh, okay, that works. That'll uh, put me back in the lead. Unfortunately, though, I don't exactly have any uh, properties to work with, which I wish would change. But we have plenty of time to actually make that change, so it's definitely not over till it's over. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think I covered the difficulties, I covered, uh, the unique AIs. That's basically all I wanted to really discuss in this, uh, basically this board playthrough, so we can kind of just take it easy and relax and see how this plays out for the most part. I seem to be getting a lot of gold, which I really appreciate. But right now I need to focus on properties, not so much gold. And I'm going to land in the bank. Okay, then. <clears throat> and we get our first promotion. Our promotion's not very good, because we only have one property, but that's okay. Yeah, let's just stay there. I guess one thing that you guys are probably wondering is, who is going to be the Princess Peach in this playthrough? Well, Princessa looks like a really likely candidate because, well, she's all pink and princessy, and yeah, she seems like she would be the best candidate. But, believe it or not, at least in this board, I've had more troubles with Platypunk in this game than anyone. I have no idea why, but Platypunk is always a jerk to me. So, I'm not sure if he's going to be the best Peach, per se, but 
he is going to be a likely candidate, I guess. Especially considering he's going to jump out to this very early lead in terms of properties, so... We're going to have to deal with him as soon as possible. For now, though, let's try to get some more properties to work with. Uh, I don't exactly approve of this, but I'm going to make sure he doesn't grab this, so I'm going to go ahead and buy that. Might also be advantageous to grab that 220 as well. Basically, the key to this board is getting basically a lot of high numbers really, really quickly. Because with a lot of high numbers, I mean, you're going to be able to snake through the entire board without much of a problem. So, uh, definitely focus on getting some good board rolls if you can't. Well, hey, you might have a better luck with uh, getting properties, so... It's a very, very simple board, and it's al almost, like, really difficult because it's such a short and small board. Because before you have anything to do with it, like, one of the players might reach the target amount without you even realizing. That's kind of the challenge of this board. But it's okay. We'll do what we can to work with this. I think I'm in a good position right now. It's kind of hard to say. Platypunk might be in the best position. And Slime got a very good roll from this. Good for you. Good for you, dude. Okay, I really need to grab some more properties now, because at the, this rate, I'm not going to get anything. And I really want to get that property next to my blue one at the top. Which I did not get. Platypunk took that, of course. So yeah, all the properties have basically been claimed. Well, except one. And honestly, I don't see myself grabbing that anytime soon. So I'm going to focus mainly on just grabbing as many suits as I can and getting to the end. I may buy out if I get the opportunity, but it might be a waste, so I have no idea what's going to be good for me. Anyhow, all the spaces have been claimed now. Platypunk and Slime are obviously going to be much more of a threat than uh, Princesa will, but... Uh, hell, even Princesa has the advantage over me right now, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yes, thank you. I could go for the bank, or I could go up here. Uh, yeah, let's go up here. Slime got his first promotion. working our way around the board. We're trying to get there. One thing we can try to depend on is the, like, this kind of thing. Where basically they can sell a shot back to the uh, bank and then, well, it doesn't get auctioned off, but we can still buy that property now, so maybe we might get lucky and land on that. Or we might get unlucky and have either Slime or Platypunk land on it, which means that they'll actually uh, benefit from that. And Platypunk got a very annoying card, which basically means all of the shops are going to increase by... or the value of the shops are going to increase by 7%. Which is going to give him quite a bit of uh, 
capital as it is. Which is kind of a shame. And shame. But it's okay. We can work with it. Let's just uh, get around the board. Hell, that card Princesa got is actually going to help her out quite a bit. Because she's going to get her promotion and she's going to be even more ahead right now. Yeah, she is. And I think she actually... No, she didn't. For a minute, I thought she actually bought back the shop she just lost, but no. Not quite. Oh, and she's going to sell another shop back. Okay. That's interesting. Of course, though, it's probably not a good idea to sell your shops. Just saying. I mean, you can definitely win that way. It's a strategy, but... I don't know, I always think the shops are going to be uh, more worth it in the long run. Unless it's a shop that's just not making any money whatsoever. And that is going to help me out quite a bit. Because now we can actually expand something. Uh, normally I'd expand this because it has a lower cost, but because uh, Platypunk has a little uh, armada right here, I think I'm actually going to expand this first. So now, if they land on that, they'll have to pay me 270. Which is a pretty big number, I have to admit. It's gonna be worthwhile if they land on it. Okay, next game we have is Memory Block. It's not so much a memory game because uh, you can't actually tell which box is which. Uh, you can, you think you can actually tell what the top block is gonna be because they make the blocks look like the top block is on the very top. But it's actually not. It's completely random. The um, blocks get shuffled around no matter what. Um, more so the contents get shuffled around, not really the blocks themselves. So that's kind of how that works. Uh, one thing you can do, though, is because you can uh, basically see what's in the bigger blocks and the smaller blocks, you can tend to avoid the bad items by going for the type of block that the bad item isn't in. And in that case, the bad item would have been the Bowser icon. And uh, I'll get into the Bowser icon and the 1-Up icon later. Although you kind of saw what the 1-Up icon did already. Okay, let's grab this. Roll a die and expand your shops by 2% for each number. Uh, 1? Oh, come on. It would have been awesome if we expanded them a little more, but that's okay. I can expand them by just 2%. That's going to give me a little increase as well. <clears throat> One thing Slime might want to do is try to aim for that shop in between his two shops right there and try to buy it out. That would be a very good strategy, and it would really help him out, big time. Will that happen, No, I have no idea. I guess we'll have to find out. Next time on Dragon Ball- No, no. Never, no. And with that, Platypunk is going to expand one of his shops, and he's going to take not really a commanding lead, but he's definitely going to be in the best shape out of anybody. I'm actually surprised he didn't increase the value of the shops where he has kind of a little uh, line down over here. That actually kind of surprised me. Okay, that's going to take me to Diamond. If I so choose to go to the Diamond, which I think I will because diamonds are forever. Or I could go down there, but now I'm going to go through that one. Let's get another space. OK, 
Okay, I can deal with that. That's fine with me. I'll take 200 gold in my pocket. My wonderful, beautiful pockets. Also, Slime, you're doing terrible. <laughs> slime is way behind right now. Although, Princesa is kind of behind, too. That's alright, though. That's alright. I'm willing to work with this. Hoping he gets a one right here. He won't land on my property, but he'll definitely give him a chance to land on it later, which... Nope, he's not going to do that. Obviously, he sees that 200 as a threat, so he's going to try to avoid it like the plague. 